This is Muta Baruka. We want to present to you a wholesome kind of level of consciousness right now. So subscribe and tell your friend them. This is Muta Baruka. Up on the line here, Keith Gardner. For those of you who don't know who Keith Gardner is, we should tell you he was the assistant commissioner of police, retired now attorney of law, director of security for the university of the West Indies. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Stephen Razor. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know me about calling by your right name. You were from there, you were on the same side of North Street as I was. Just Blake Road and, and Text Lane, and I'm up, I'm up, up on you. Are you serious? <laughs> you serious? But of course. All right, go on, tell the people them say, a whole time Trinity did you know. <laughs> Police that was feared by criminals all over Jamaica. Uh, <laughs> yes, indeed. All right. Let could get into it now. Past I, um, assistant commissioner, you see where I go and now, is there any difference between when you was police commissioner and now? I mean, in terms of well, criminal activities. From time to time, you know, in Muta, these we used to have crime waves, right? In the early days, when you were going to school, mm. you hear about a crime wave, crime escalate, and then the measures, maybe stop get measures, and it decreases, and so on. No, you don't have crime waves, waves anymore. You have a constant flow of crime across Jamaica. And the nature of it is of such that it diminishes, diminishes even the toughest of, of persons, right? Mm -hmm. Attacks against um, young girls and, and the misogyny against women. And sheer brutality, you know, with which the murders are committed, beheading yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah. So the cries of the people are out there. And it is going up to the Father, you know? And it is time for something positive to be done now to ameliorate all of this. All right. As, as we say, as, as, as a past assistant commissioner, me, me have to make people know that, and you know that. Yes. Trinity was a feared policeman all over Jamaica. When, the, when criminal hear the name Trinity, is like, yeah, all right, no, we're not going to make him come in over here, you know, if we start on Christian. So, if in a year time, the criminal, the fear, the assistant commissioner. So it would appear to me that it's either that different breed of people or is that there's no one there that command that fear when them hear a commissioner name or assistant commissioner. There's no one there that command that, you know, respect and fear in the hearts of the people. Why, why, why is that? Let me tell you something. First of all, in the 60s, and don't forget that in 1976 alone, Twice as many policemen were killed than w w w w was the case last year. Mm. Thirteen policemen were killed. I was shot and seriously in you during that that, yes. that year. Yes. But the kind of criminals that you had at that time, Muta, you would have recalled Dennis Bart, Kappa, Morrison, and them guys would escape uh, from death row, mm. right? And were really wreaking havoc. I've often said that Copper's man, man, um, mantra was that, well, the only people in uniform that him like was doctors and nurses, <laughs> right? No, honestly, but the, those were callous guys, but yeah. callousness wasn't the order of the day. Yeah. I remember in those days I could line up 25 men, each holding out the other in the way, and it was a state of emergency, right? Yeah. Remember now. So we have special powers and take them to station, process them. Those who were innocent, we'll let them go and they had it, um, we'll take in. Yeah. I remember, um, one of the times, you know, we, we had a group of men along Olympic Way, and one man was at the head of the, 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 the 25, and he said, listen, I don't know about you, know, but I will make a dash for it, as well as the reach car and the Mauro Drive. Yeah. And the man holding him said, well, listen, you can't stay there, we are all out of you, know, because it's a charity bullet, them take corner. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that was a legend. It's like and a that, missile. It's like your that, bullet yeah. is like a missile. Yeah, you know, so people really, and I never really had to use deadly force at the time because the reputation assisted. Yes, so definitely. people hearing about this now, not going to take any chance. They're kind of different here now, whereby the people are younger, yes. right? They, 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 they weren't exposed to any nurturing. And the start are from the, the, the younger days. I don't know Muta, to what extent they have been in the inner city, especially mm. around Trenchtown and Rima, Wilton Gardens mm. and, 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 and them places. We see the little girls carrying baby. Every one of them from 12 come up. Yes. Two, three children behind them and thing, and them don't know where them baby father is. The baby father themselves are 15, 16 year old and the only thing they know 
is about the gun and violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So it's a different kind of thing. And I'm cold because the young man say, listen, I'm going to make some dope tonight, you know? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You still talk so like you're up to date, man. You're up to date, no, man. So like you're up to date. I'm a man who goes to train stone regular, you know? Yeah. I'm a man who goes to train stone regular, you know? Yeah. I used to go down there every year and and, and and when I had my security company and full of truck buy hundred pounder flow and tin yeah, oil, yeah, big tin yeah. oil and me and my children them and you know, I go and give everybody a bag of this and yeah. let have some money and thing. I still go up there sometimes, thirteenth street, fourteenth street, them guys we are sticking and yeah. they don't sit down and all of them. So yeah. I know what is happening. When me I tell you something, Trinity, when me and you tell me your name Trinity, I'm afraid to. <laughs> I mean, if I did, I do well, I tell you something, you know, Muta. Sometimes I have been at the stage that I am now, at my age and thing, and I look back at some of the things that I do. I ask about it's crazy because sometimes I'm chasing some gunman, and mm. believe me, without a single thought about what can happen to me. And yeah, that's what happened to me in yeah. Lima, chasing a man, and him going in a room, and I start kicking off every door. And by the time I reach the third floor, it's like a open fire. Yeah. And before I know it, four of my teeth, them lick out, and the man behind me get a shot in the belly and jump the three-story floor yeah. down into the thing there. Down from the ground and thing. I had to, you know, race and yeah. hold on for him, put him in the jeep and drive over. Yeah, um, yeah. Kingston Public, where I pass out. So it's them kind of thing. You know, you know what is hard for? Where I was shot, I was born only about 100 yards from there. Yeah. You understand? So it's part 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 no, at Fourth Street there in um, oh. Winter Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I was born at 16 Church Street, Trent Stone. Yeah, yeah. Right? And stuff. So that is the kind of situation. So these guys nowadays, as I say, no, they're man in a water. They, when them when man get high, first of all, the man drink White Home Street. Because we say now all the, 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 yeah. the, the substance that they use to preserve dead, that's what the man yeah. them drink. Right? Embalming, and them, embalming fluid. Yeah, and them, they, them, when, when them wrap the weed now, them wrap it in, in them use grabber. Yeah. And some of the grabber are soaking and reddering and things. Yeah. So, you know, when the man is dry, that, you know, and yeah, them the feel, them feel like them in the We're that. not talking about the use of coke and all them yeah. things there. Where they might use the season this place. So, some mad people are not taking a tap. Them feel man invincible, man. No, a man sit down and drink. Come in a bar and sit down. And him sit down and drink two rounds of liquor and just pop off. Right? And yeah. before you know it, four man dead, including, and five man dead, including himself. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing where we're looking at. A man kill a man and cut off a man. Yes, and still and have a piece. Man. And then the little pit in the mouth there, run up and down with it. That's yeah. the kind of thing where we have, and we talk yeah, about facts. Yeah. All right. right? Let me ask you to something now. No, you see? We yeah. see, if you was the assistant, uh, if you was the commissioner of police now, what would you do, or what would you, or what would you suggest now to the present people them who is in charge for really a long term stemming of this crime? I'm going to answer your question, Muta. But if you know me, I, I always like set the pace to answer the question. Though. Okay. First of all, I must establish my qualification to answer such a question. I was assistant commissioner of police in charge of operations in the commissioner's office for Jamaica. I reported to a deputy commissioner, right? And it, on occasions, every man would go up and report what transpired the night before and thing. One time I go into the commissioner's office, that time Mr. Forbes was commissioner. And I asked him, I said, you send a detective to be in charge of a certain critical police here and thing. And boy, boss, he asked for my opinion. I tell you, I question that, why? And the man reaching him, drawing him, right on top, drawing, draw to this every officer in the force. And say, look at this, which, which one would you send? And believe you me, Buta. Motor. I was quiet because man at that point. If to come back to your question now, if I were a commissioner of police, and let me tell you this, those days are long past. Those ambitions have died. I'm no, I'm no longer interested in becoming commissioner. I'm just being vociferous because I like other members of civil, civil society. I'm fed up with what is happening, right? Were I to become commissioner, the first task would be to clean up the force. Too, too often. Police commissioners come in and they tell you what their, their, their doctrine is, what their mission is, and they tell you about corruption and you know, the force, and how many police officers um, you see them dismiss. So the first challenge was to target those who um, we have intelligence on that are um, involved in criminal activities, present the evidence, because listen, there's a public interest aspect of policing, you know, where you retire a man in the public interest. And I've seen them retire deputy commissioner of police, superintendents of police, and that hasn't been done in the longest while. That kind of thing must be generated by the public service and by the, by the, the police commissioner who forward the evidence to the public 
police services commission who do, do not act so motor i said they don't act on their own motor the services commission can say listen i'm going to fire keith gardner from the force you know no it must be activated by the commission on report that this this man is involved in nefarious activities you know and this is the evidence that is the evidence and i think that him should be retired in the public interest the rule of natural justice applies them call you them point all the things to you and give you an opportunity to be heard and make a determination you're out you have of course recourse right you can always apply to the the public jamaica public council and yeah. the constitution makes allowance for that and thing and if they think that that it was unfair and unjust then you get back to work but i think right now too much friendship going on in this thing a man coming up for man and the time has come now like for men like me to talk yeah Mota, I, I just want to present one example to you yeah i was in area one as assistant commissioner of police for trelawney st james hanover and westmoreland right and I took, I got information that a certain police officer was corrupt to the, to the, to the bone. I took him on frontline duties and I've been doing station guard at Era 1. And I went away, I went and leave for about six days. And as soon as I leave, they put back the man on frontline duty. You know what happened? Police from another jurisdiction set up a roadblock and hold him with four illegal guns. And it is, it is, it is, um, there, 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 there's evidence to suggest that he was taken into the stone crushers. Right? He's in prison now in about 12 years and he should be doing 24. Right? So that is the sort of thing that we need to deal decisively with. All of senior police officers who have evidence that policemen are involved in criminal activities. And usually them don't just get up to the and say, I'm going to do it, you know. Somewhere along the line, they have displayed that those traits um, to dishonest. Um, and for after they say that even at training school, you must start look out for them. Yeah. Right? Uh, and that is the gist of the matter. All right. You know, Trinity, they... A former commissioner, I think it's Dr. Carl Williams, when he was the meeting office, he said one of his greatest um, disappointment was that he couldn't get to clean up the police force more. And what we find out since that day, we find that more people start to talk about the corruption in the police force. With the people in the that talk about it for a long time, because that is why the police. The, 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 the information that like the police need in a certain community, them can't get it because the people them don't trust the police. And the people them have been saying that over the years. Now we say, man like you and others have come out now and say, there is a problem with the corruption of the police force. So, um, why is it so difficult for, I mean, like the ministers, the minister of security and the prime minister and the government, why is it so difficult for them to understand that one of the chief problems the 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 the, 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 the wall that is between trying to alleviate the problem and make the problem stay is that the police force need to clean up. Why is it so Mot difficult for them to understand Mota. that? Mota. Yes. It's not just no I talking about police corruption and leaking out against you know. If you look at the Green Archives, nineteen ninety nine, while I was at um uh, while I was at the Cavill studying law. I wrote that damn article, you know, deal decisively under the caption, deal decisively with corruption. No. And that was oh, over a decade and a half ago, right? So it's not now. The last substantive post I held in the Jamaica Constable was the assistant commissioner in charge of disciplinary matters, right? So I deal with discipline. When a man is, is accused of murder, for example, and the, the, the file is sent on to DPP, and the DPP ruled that um, well, the, the thing is not substantiated and thing is should either be sent to coroners or whatever. Or in instances where policemen are reported um, to be involved in criminal activities, whether it's physical force that is undue against a citizen or not. The DPP might say, suggest that there's no criminal charge founded, this must be dealt with departmentally. The files are sent to me, right, and I draw the, the suggested charges and recommend to the commissioner that these charges be made against this constable or this officer yeah. right i have yet to say that i'm going down of course against sub officers where court of inquiries and so on are, are sometimes um, instituted yeah. but in terms of officers going to service commission and being retired in the public interest for corrupt activity or for um not between malfeasance mm. or misfeasance in office i don't i don't have any that has been um 
sent from the service. I remember one last one was Albert Richard, who was a, 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 a superintendent of police, detective superintendent of police. And I'm going to call the other people because they're alive. Mm. That is what we want to see. We need to send a message. The commissioner talking about them never getting any chance to do that. That, that, is, a, that is a fallacy. Yeah, yeah. Right? Send, the, send the report and send the men down to the service. You know what? We're blaming the service commission. We don't give them the work to do, and, and then when when you give them the work to do, and they don't do it, they're criticized. Unless those charges are sent down to them, yeah. and they're allowed to convene. Because they are the ones who are responsible for appointing commissioners for dealing with discipline in the, in the, the police force, and, and so on. If you don't give them the grounds and we so to found the charges or inquire into the charges, why turn around and blame them? Blame them, the yeah. a misunderstanding or lack of understanding of the role of the, the services commission. Yes, yes. All yeah. right. Indicom, you think that Indicom is a is an obstacle in the the work where the policeman supposed to do? Let me tell you something, um, Muta. I was a crime fighter and I was a loner. My my when I my my best friend, my sidekick, started in 1976. Remember, I joined in 72. When I was seconded to when I was sent to commissioners of Senat, um, Natura Squad, I met my best friend and 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 fearless crime fighter, Mr. Osborne, mm. right? And we together did a lot of work. This man was never recognized. I mean, I've been given the, the medal of gallantry, medal for merit for service. Yes. And as the husband has not been acknowledged to this day by any government, the work that I, I have done, I've been given credit to. I could never have accomplished it without him. So I want to really shout him out and pay respect to him. Yes. But the, the, the point I'm making is that, you know, think things and times have changed, right? And the, whoever is going to be commissioner now, we have proven and demonstrated to the public that we lack the will to deal with this thing. You're talking about the police force? You're talking about the police force? Yes, yeah. yes, within the force. Everybody, this okay. quality thing. But yeah. this man is my squad. And yeah. By the time I, I, I had 10 years in the service, all of my squad mates had gone, you know, so I don't really have any squad. Yeah. And I was never a popular man within the force because I was a disciplinary yeah. If you're an officer, you must take command your your your, your, your division of and course. the things that are necessary. I really... I was an avowed supporter of Mr. Quill, and he's a good man. Nobody can doubt that. Nobody can say he's corrupt, right? Yes. But all I'm saying is that his Christ, Christian attitudes led him to read the Beatitudes, right? And not to be assertive in taking action. Nobody suggested, and those times are long gone. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, well, Trinity, Trinity, Trinity. Yeah. Trinity, he's a poet, man. <laughs> No, I want to go to the Bishop Houston and uh, Douglas Forrest and not their point. And, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and learn from people like you. Are there. <laughs> that's funny, that's funny. Repeat that again. It's Christian attitude. Yeah. Make him read the attitude. Yeah, yes, yes. I was not able to... <laughs> Yeah, 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 hey, Muta, you, you, you're too young to know about Bishop, La um, Bishop Lawrence. He yeah. was a car for the police, but he traveled in Bible. Yeah. Right? And the police are trained on you alone, mm. in uniform. I went to you doing something wrong. You know, at that time, Ganja was mandatory. Yeah, 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 yeah. smoking it. He's not going to lock you up. He's calling and reading the scripture to you and making the Lord's fire. Sometimes <laughs> on the knee. Nothing was more embarrassing than that. You understand? That's but funny. Time, those times are long gone. We need God, yes. But as I often say, we're in a room. We're like saints in a room. Yeah. Dark room. I will sit down there and pray till the sweat. Forgot to send man of um, light from heaven. When all of one of all of, all of, of all that was needed to be done was for one of us to reach up and just hit the switch and turn on the light. Yeah. We yeah. need a commissioner to hit the switch. Right? Somebody who do have any friend and in the squad with them can go to and say, Well, I to the boss, I've 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 seen and give me a chance. Right? These are serious times that call for serious measures. And I don't see anybody people might be upset with me. Yes. There are some younger men coming up, some men, men and women coming up who yeah. are equal to the task, but they are not yet ready. They are young. Yeah, yeah, they are yeah. brilliant police officers. Yesterday, I listened to the swearing on of some police, two, three hundred police officers, and listened to the, dic the, the diction of the, the officers from the training school, and I was shocked. They sound like academics, yeah, right? Yeah. Very, very um, brilliant, very, very articulate. And I know that these people are up and coming, and I'm yeah. hoping for the day that they'll take charge. But right now, Neither the first or second tier I'm seeing anybody mm. that will that have the will to take on what is happening in here. But you know, right? you, I know, I know. Say you, you stay far from the ministry of security. No, no, no. Listen, listen. You see, from 1993, you know that I was Siaga's bodyguard for years yes. and a half years, right? Yeah. You see, from Colonel McMillan 
call uh-huh. all the policemen what that is all labor rights and all that those that is all PMP because I'm smart you know yeah. what he did was to send out to the GLP and say give me all this all the policemen who are political and I'm sent to the PMP and ask them to give them all this are those who are political mm. so all the so-called GLP policemen and all the so-called PMP policemen were called on to Ellison Road at a gigantic meeting mm. and Colonel McMillan said this and I believe in second chance I don't know whether these, this, what is being said here is true but I have a list of all of the policemen that they say are political. Some of you appear on two lists, <laughs> right? Yeah. Are the two lists. It's either they are not political or perhaps they are freelancing, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you see, from, I was told that in 1993, you don't catch me going and in, getting involved in any kind of politics or associated, yeah. associated yeah. with, with okay. politics. Not that they are not good, decent yeah. politicians, but I don't want my name to be associated. I'm a with political them. officer. All I right. learned my lesson then, yeah. and from that on, I was a reformed police officer. Not that I'm working with um, the Prime Minister for the eight and a half years. Yeah. We were involved, you know, but we were seen or perceived to be. be uh, yeah. You can't be perception, okay? Yeah. I know you so take sleep on my bed. Turn around. Well, all right, the last question I know. The so so, so, so um, movement and the state of emergency yes. how, how you view them yeah but hold on Muta, mm. you don't know, answer the question they asked about um the, the minister about but, but, but you see a talk and you don't care at siaga no, no me say, in the come like you move around the, no no i'm not moving around in, let me tell you something you must have some checks and balances yeah, right yeah. where social conscience is not within the organization you must have a watchdog yeah. and i remember for years the only watchdog where those run the tweets and public eye yeah. You understand? You yeah. must have somebody where you think about before and think of the consequences of your action That's before right. you engage in it. Yeah. And yeah. the Jamaican uh, human rights people were there, right? Flo O'Connor and others mm. to keep us in check. When you have crime fighters, it's all good and people talk about dead squads, you know. But I mean, you kill a man, right? Who you know is a murderer and maybe him shoot at you and whatever, whatever. But if you continue to do it, the first time it's very difficult, the next time it becomes easier, nah, right? Yeah. And it's easy, it is easy to fall into that abyss. Yes. So when you start killing innocent people, what are you going to do to the weakness? When you start kill criminal elements, or you start murder them, what are you going to do to the innocent man who's a witness, a bystander? You're going to kill him too? Mm-hmm. You set up a chain reaction. And that is why I believe there are some people who have demonstrated over time by their, their vicious and villainous actions yes, yes. that they are not worthy to remain among us yes. as civil members of the society. But the, it can be, I don't believe in either state sanctioned killings mm-hmm. or in the, the death squad kind of thing. But we see, One point that is needed to be made, Mota, if you allow me to say it. Yes. You see, when we clean up our act, yeah. When we clean up our act in the Jamaica Constabulary Force and increase our capacity to investigate and, and, and present cases before the court and secure, convic- and secure conviction, where are you going to put the prisoners? Because we're against Not building prisons. Maybe I forgot we about covering for building prisons. In 1976, what yeah. is going to happen? Where are you going to put them? We have to call upon Britain to build the prison. Well, all right, Muta. These are food for thoughts, you know. Yeah. Because we have to think ahead. We have to think outside of the box. Yes. But you're asking my last question now. What do you think about Zoso? Zoso and the, the state of emergency. You know what I mean? Um, severe, um, severe, severe circumstances call for severe yeah. measures. Yeah. And I don't want to say severe. severe. You see, Muta, what is happening? We know that from, um, we know about the social contract, right? Where as, as societies develop and we recognize the, the necessity for our family and our, our property to protect to be protected. It was necessary to put the strong people in charge of protecting the village, to protecting the community, yes. and so on. And a price had to be paid. Yes. Those of us who in the, in the in those ancient um, the times used to go in the fields and gather or uh, plant or hunt saw the necessity to protect them against marauders, right? People who invaded and took away the women and children. Yeah. And there was a cost to pay for that. So those of us who went into the field left something for the ones who were remaining at home as payment. Mm-hmm. And as we develop now, we know that we have to give up certain social rights, right? To have policing in, in, in order to, to secure. The do, that is the price we paid to pay for our democracy or freedom. So now, with all the murders, that couldn't be allowed to continue unabated. So the, the, the little inconvenience that many of us yeah. face. Yeah. 
yeah. right the curtailment of our rights freedom of of movement yeah. you know freedom of association and all that motor the sooner we get the thing together with everybody jumping on board and supporting yeah. instead of some staying one side and criticizing the sooner this thing i get done motor. yeah better you know well, give thanks, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, you to to you know, I know a whole heap of people, they play there, but I can tell you something. A whole heap of people listen to you and say, we have never known the Trinity is still alive. Ah, uh, Trinity alive, I will. Yeah, and when I'm gone, long after I'm gone, the legend will remain. All right, of course. But I mean, I tell you, well, as I you. I'm all in a fear, man, and listen to me. My, I have not gone, gone around and fractured relationship between decent people. Yes, yes. My target was always the dangerous and vicious government. You know, right, people might talk about, oh, I just want to take this life and take that life. It's five different times I go near death. Where you get the word, where you get the name Trinity from? Trinity are three different places one hey, time. No, no, who they know where you already know. That comes from this pocket to move it. It, it, it points my death. No, 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 no. People use you, you, to say that I'm a marksman. Yeah, I don't yeah. know who that is, but it comes from that. Yeah, all right, yeah. sir. All right, give thanks. Yeah, give thanks. Thank you for having me, brother. Yeah, man, I did. Yeah, that was Keith Gardner, man. Elias Trinity, assistant commissioner of the police, retired attorney of law. Director of Security for the University of the Wendy's, the West Indies, giving his, his really experience and views about things and times and where are going as, know, as it relates to the traumatic experience of Jamaica got through. The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring, educating and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support.